Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm from Milpitas Adult School, and I'm going to talk about teaching with YouTube, particularly build playlists to deliver, deliver curated contents. There was a question in the, um, the chat about um, creating uh, videos on Apple um, with Apple products. Um, same problem, I've had that same problem when you've taken things vertically and you want it to be horizontal. You import it into, I think it's the, the Apple uh, video uh, editor, I think it's QuickTime or something like that. No, it's not QuickTime. But then you basically hit it and touch it, touch the screen and you can twist it, uh, twist it so you can re focus it and reshape it within that video. Um, maybe I can do a demo of that at the very end, okay? Um, any other questions, uh, feel free to put them into the chat box. Um, we're gonna talk about creating a, a, YouTube, a YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna identify patterns and resources for the YouTube channel. We're gonna talk specifically about delivering playlists to deliver that content and then sharing that content and then we're going to talk about using YouTube inside and outside of the classroom. Um, one of the things before we begin, we're talking about how we're using YouTube now. Well, specifically, I want to talk about using YouTube, and especially during this time for distance learning, and especially for the classroom. And we always have to talk about what our content is and how do we expect our YouTube channel to be used? So a lot of people have uh, learning uh, management systems um, or um, so they might be using Canvas or Google Classrooms or they might be using a language management system from, um, from ReadWorks or one from Newzella or whatever the case may be. You can use YouTube almost the same way where you can basically put your content where you want the video content that you want your students to review uh, in one place and organize them into playlists. I want to talk about a basic pattern of a channel. Uh, on the top of the channel, you usually have your header, which usually identifies your school or your class. You always have a featured video, and this is a short video welcoming people to your channel. You want to, uh, a lot of people have their uploads, and if you create a basic channel, initially that's all you're going to see is people's uploads. But today I'm going to talk about mostly getting content from other channels and bring them, uh, importing it into your own channel so you can share this with your students. Again, you can create playlists, which can be a combination of your own content, videos that you created, paired with uh, videos created by other people, and you organize them yourself on a given topic. Or you can import saved playlists. So I could see uh, entire playlists from another channel. So instead of download every single one of those videos, I can basically simply grab the URL from that playlist and import it into my, my um, YouTube channel. Also, the, uh, you can see on your channel that you can have featured channels. So for instance, I want my students to go to VOA News or I want people to go to Jennifer, Jennifer ESL or USCIS. And then there's related channels chosen by YouTube that, that pair with your, your channel. Uh, before I continue, I want to talk about playlist and what it, uh, because I'm going to be constantly referring to playlists. A playlist is an ordered list of videos. They allow viewers to watch multiple videos in a predetermined order by the playlist owner. So for instance, if, you're, if you created the playlist, you can put them in a, a, a order of the newest, play, uh, newest video on top or the, the oldest video on top, or you can, create it in a, um, you can create it in a way that you've chosen yourself. Um, if you're importing it from another person, you have to 
retain the, the um, predetermined playlist that they've already made. A playlist can be composed of videos uploaded by you or videos uploaded by another creator and then saved or imported to your channel. Uh, we're just, this is an example of a, a channel. This is my, my citizenship channel. I just uh, top, um, right when I took this, this picture, it was 10,000 subscribers. Today, so it's t finally top 30,000 subscribers, subscribers, so I'm super happy about that. But anyway, as you can see, I have a feature video that's basically welcoming people uh, to the channel. I have a created list of my students that I'm interviewing. I have a feature channels, which I want students to check out here, um, USCIS, VOA News, et cetera. And then on the top, this is where I can customize the channel. Other people cannot see these buttons, only I can see these buttons. So customizing the channel means I'm going to be mo uh, modifying what I'm doing on my own channel, what videos and playlists I can, I want people to see. Creator Studio is when I want to go in and um, uh, edit specific uh, videos that I've uploaded. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, single, uh, single playlists. So these are videos chosen by you on a single topic. So the default uh, playlist is uploaded videos. So these are videos that I've taken with my own students and I've simply uploaded the, them to my channel and people can see them because they're public. Here's an example on the bottom of a whole, uh, of not one uh, playlist, but multiple playlists put in a vertical, excuse me, a horizontal playlist. So there's one, uh, there's, they're talking about report backs from citizenship interviews. So here's one of my own students. The second one is actually from another person. So is the third one and the fourth one. So it's a mix and match of different uh, videos from different people talking about their citizenship interviews. But again, Jennifer? We have some uh, questions uh, specific to playlists. Can we answer those now? Yes, please. Okay. How do you delete a previously saved playlist on YouTube? You go into your library and you can delete it from your library. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay. If okay. an uploaded video from another creator is used, will it stay on the playlist if the creator removes it? No. It, if the creator removes the playlist, the video from from YouTube, then that video will no longer appear appear anywhere on YouTube. Okay. Are you, uh, what if you don't want these to be public? And I think you address that later. I'm going to talk about. Uh, well, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and hope I hopefully I can give you a demonstration of that. But there's three there's three levels when you upload a, a, a video. There's one that's called private. Only you can see that video. And a lot of times you want to set that to private because maybe you're trying to fix the, the closed captions. The second one is unlisted. So only the people that you share the link with can see that video. So for instance, um, I have a whole set of uh, citizenship interviews that my students don't want to be out in public but they want to share it with each other um, specifically so they can watch that comment on them and then after the person has passed their citizenship interview i can delete that or um i can they can i can release that into the public it's totally up to the student on that one and the final one is public so when it's uploaded it's immediately shared with the youtube public at large does that help Yes. Okay. That should be good. Yeah. Okay. If you something is something was originally public, you can send that set that to unlisted or you can set that to private. So you can change the settings. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to talk about a playlist. So these are created. Um, these are multiple playlists. So this one has 
If you can see here, there's 19 videos in that playlist, there's six videos in that playlist, and there's 34 videos in that playlist. All these videos have been cre created by me. And then this one I've imported from USCIS, which is a civics question playlist. So basically I've only had to copy the URL of the playlist and import it directly. So there's no downloading, nothing has been, no content has been stolen. It's simply creating a, a visual alias to that site. Uh, here's another playlist from multiple um, uh, from multiple sources, and again, you can put them in a, a horizontal playlist. Okay, so I wanted to go on to creating a YouTube channel. Is there any other questions before I continue? So this, so is the strategy to create one playlist per subject class or one by instructor? Trying no. to figure out best strategy yeah. of teaching multiple subjects. Can I? Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to have a better illustration of that when I go to another um, channel. But for what if you want to as a as a as a as a, a teacher, when I teach citizenship, I put everything on the channel and then I organize things by topic on that channel. ESL instructor, multiple teachers use my channel to access ESL content. So when I do that, I create a playlist for ESL1, I create an ESL uh, playlist for a conversation, I create a playlist for writing, I create a playlist for um, EL Civics. So that's a, a better organized way to access that information. So you can do it by class, you can create a, cl a channel by class, or you can create a channel for your school and then people can go in and or a person create can create playlists specific to that classroom does that help two more questions sure uh some of us are new to creating videos will you be discussing that i'm not really going to be talking about creating videos i can do that at the end for instance uh, the example i wanted to show you was um, a video that i took from a zoom session that i did for a citizenship interview and the most important thing is that when the point i wanted to make with that video is that if i simply let the automatic english closed captions uh, uh, take over what the person the closed captions are able to to access what I'm saying fairly fairly easily but if you have people speaking in different accents YouTube is not very good at picking up what they're actually saying so you have to be able to go in and edit those closed captions and I wanted to talk a little bit about that okay last question for this the set is there a limit to how many videos we can upload I haven't hit it. I have over 500 videos. So, and there um, you go, folks. It's more, almost yeah, more than 500 videos. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I have uh, imported videos from USCIS and other people as well. Um, one of my favorite playlists, in fact, is a, a playlist of people at different oath ceremonies. And so I try to show a video from that uh, every Sunday. Okay, um, so we're gonna talk more about the construction of the YouTube channel. Is that okay to go ahead? You bet. Okay, great. So I really, I, if you guys take one picture, take a picture of this one. This is bit.ly playlist-help. And this is basically how to save and share videos or playlists, okay? So a lot of things that I'm gonna be talking about, I'm not gonna be able to explain that well just because my own personal limitations, but YouTube has a very robust help section that will enable to, you to help uh, you to save them, to share your videos, uh, to construct your channels. So please take a look at this. So again, it's bit.ly slash playlist dash help. Okay. 
going to let everybody just in one more second. We got it in the chat, Jennifer. You're okay. good to go. Is there any question? Was there a question there, please? No? Nope. Okay. Um, most Now, first of all, you can create a YouTube channel with other accounts. However, it's better to create a YouTube channel with your Gmail account and more or a, a Gmail hosted uh, account. And it's more and it so you can do that. Okay, so the the easiest way I'm going to show you the easiest way I know to create a Gmail uh, to create a YouTube channel. So first you log in to to uh, Google with your Gmail account. And the, if, because you're practicing and just starting out, you may want to use an account that's not uh, linked with your school district. You need to practice first, play around a little bit, and then maybe go back in with your school account. So here I am, I'm um, creating one with Long May She Wave. You basically have to name yourself so you have a first name, a last name, and I believe they're asking for further identification nowadays. And it's going to say it's going to create a channel for you. So here it is, bare bones. It has my name. It has home. It has uploads. No, we don't have any uploads. And so here I am going to customize my channel. I'm not going to go to Creator Studio because I don't have any channels yet to edit. I want to basically modify or uh, create my uh, create my channel or customize my channel. So this is where I'm going to start adding videos and I'm going to start adding playlists. I see. Is there any questions that right now? We what about Google.net accounts for channel creation? Um, I'm going to answer that. Google.net okay. is not a Gmail. Uh, yeah. Google.com is. So if you mistyped it. The answer is yes, but if you really meant Google.net, that doesn't work. Why is it best to use a Gmail? Because it's in the same playground. Okay. Because it's, go ahead, Jennifer. Okay. So why you want to create uh, in Google? Because if you want to derive any income from your channel, for instance, if you want ad revenue, it's going to hook. It, you, it's much more easy to hook up with AdSense. So you can get paid from YouTube. So if that's something you want to consider, however, I'm not going to really address that many issues around revenue. Okay. Is that it? That's good. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so here I'm basically saying I want to set my intention. So here I'm going to basically say something about about, and so that's where I'm going to describe what my channel is about. And here I'm, my channel description is basically talking about how I want to teach people about how to use YouTube. Or for instance, if this was my citizenship account, I would say I want to help prepare people for, my, for their citizenship interview. Or my ESL account would say I want to help my ESL students learn English conversation more effectively. So it's really important to set that intention because otherwise your YouTube channel could be a dump for all sorts of things and it can lose focus. And a YouTube channel that loses focus is not going to be very useful to people. So please set your attention first. Uh, later, uh, you, you can add channel art and you can use something from the gallery, use something from the computer. If I demo this, we could be here all day because I really like pretty things. I'm in very easily distracted. So please just use this as a placeholder um, to get something from your own computer. And I got some poppies. Uh, I love California. And now I'm ready to go on to the channel settings. So anytime you see this wheel, this is this is a that this means settings. You can change this and changes there. You're going to be basically changing your channel. You're turning that wheel. You're creating change. Here, one of the most important things that you can you want to keep all your liked videos private. So, for instance, I always um, 
when my dad was when my dad was alive, he really had problems with me uh, watching Stephen Colbert because um, <laughs> he really didn't like him, um, and because my, my dad was really conservative. But so when I would, and I knew that sometimes he would access my computer when I wasn't at home. So I kept all my videos private. Um, and also you don't want necessarily your students to know what videos that you like. You want to keep that kind of stuff private. You may want to keep your subscriptions private. Now, if you've already decided that you're, this is going to be, remember this is practice. So you may want to keep your subscriptions private. When you have basically mastered your YouTube channel, you may want to take this off because you want, you want your students to be able to access all sorts of ESL uh, channels that you've subscribed to. And this one, keep all my safe playlists private. You want to make sure that that's unchecked. Why? Because you're going to be you're going to be sharing those saved playlists. That's going to be super super important for you. You also want to go down to advanced settings and basically uh, read, uh, make sure your privacy settings are in uh, uh, intact, and make sure again that the saved playlists are private. That you've unchecked that. Here, this is getting a little bit more into the weeds, and we're just, I'm just going to mention this and let it go. You want to make sure that you um, are not violating any copyright status. So this is basically you would be downloading videos from other channels and then uploading them to your, your channel as if it was your own content. If people find out that you're downloading other people's videos and then uploading them as if they were yours, you will get dinged on your copyright. And if you get several violations, they can shut down your channel. Um, they also will take a look at your community guidelines. For, for instance, are you, um, does your content, uh, is it, is it clean? Is it accessible for children? And YouTube has been making a lot more effort to, to make sure that content or making a distinction between what children can see and what children cannot see. And then also there's more, uh, more information about monetization and live streaming and embedding live streams. So this is the stuff that you could take a look at when you go into maybe the YouTube creator channel. The YouTube creator channel basically tells you all about creating the channels on YouTube, gives you a lot more help, talks about monetization, talks about creating custom th thumbnails and things like that. So please take a look at this on your own time. Uh, upload low default. So if you're going to be uploading videos, you want it. Do you, what do you, what do you want your privacy setting to be automatically? You can change, you can make them private. So only you can see them. You can make them unlisted. So the people only the people you share the links with directly can see them, or you can make them public. That's totally up to you. You always want to choose the category. So for instance, when I initially started doing citizenship, everything was being uploaded to comedy, which I have no idea why that was happening. And with licensing, you can create standard YouTube licensing or Creative Commons. You want to do standard YouTube uh, licensing because if somebody uses your content, so for instance, they take one of your videos, download it to their, their um, their computer and then upload it again as if it was their own content. If you have a standard YouTube license, you have recourse to YouTube to tell them to take it down. So YouTube would contact those people who violated your copyright. You're not the person who is contacting them to say that, hey, you violated my copyright. With Creative Commons, I'm not so sure. There's certain aspects of Creative Commons that you can choose um, that people can reuse them and things like that. So I basically have stuck with standard, U uh, standard YouTube um, licensing. Uncheck for advertisements. You gotta make your own decisions about advertising, but this one's really important, Key channel keywords. 
uh, education, ESL, ELL, literacy, adult EDU, ed tech, um, uh, adult basic education, um, tech, uh, what is that, vote, vote tech, uh, vessel, all of those channel word keywords are going to make it easier for your students to find you and for other student uh, other programs to find you as well you learn a lot from taking a look at other schools uh webs uh, other schools uh youtube channels okay and make sure you add your own website as well so finally, after all that setting up, we're going to start adding some uh, videos, okay? So one of the things you have to do is, you, uh, if, with uploads, this is your own content, but when you get down to playlists, this is organized content for your channel and from other channels. So let's talk about created playlists versus saved playlists. Creative playlists have been chosen videos organized by topic. So the first one on the top up here, uh, when I originally was doing the ESL playlist, I have created playlists, uh, a couple from VOA Learning English. I have a couple play, uh, videos from ESL Jobs. And then I have uh, six videos um, from that I've called ESL basics and the ESL basic ones contain videos from all sorts of different uh, content areas. On the save playlist on the bottom, I've cr I basically imported or save playlists that have already been created from several different uh, groups. So for instance, I have one about grammar from Mark Kulik. I have another one about food and drinks from Mark Kulik. Uh, one about ES Hall Homes from uh, Mark, and then I have a, a really great playlist from Jennifer Lessons for Beginners. Um, is there a question? Is it okay to go on? Well, um, I, I'm not sure we you covered live stream. Can you have a live, live, live stream? stream? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not that familiar with live stream. I've only done a couple. Um, the live. I'm going to show you an example of one YouTube channel where. The teachers are basically live streaming on, on um, I'm not sure if they're front ending face, well, I think it, they're basically live streaming uh, to on Facebook. Then they're downloading the video and then uploading it to YouTube. So if the person can hold on and I would share that with them later on. Okay. Okay. Uh um, the other thing is, is that uh, because I have done live streaming so infrequently, it would be really better for them to take a look at the YouTube help on that one. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a question about um, the unlisted uh, video. Yeah. Um, somebody did that and they sent the link to their students and their students still couldn't watch it. Unlisted? There, unlisted. Did the student absolutely click that video? I mean, click that link. A lot of variables, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it has to be that they have to, they're, I think that what might have happened is the student might be on your YouTube channel, they say, teacher, I can't see the video. The student is going to have to click the link that you sent them. They're not going to see that automatically if they just go to your YouTube channel. So the easiest way for me that I share two time uh, two different ways a lot of times I'm on the video I'm going to share the link with the person I can send it to them through the email or I can text it to them and I'm going to show you about how to share the URL in a, in a couple slides from now okay is that okay is that we're, all right I think we're good okay Okay, so you're looking for this really great add to icon. So of course, everybody knows the plus, but people don't, don't probably are not familiar with the, uh, it's not a hamburger. <laughs> it's basically trying to show you a playlist. So it's video one, video two, video three, and you're adding a plus. This is basically saying you're adding the playlist. You're not just adding one video, you're adding an entire playlist. So what you're going to do is you want to start with the video you want in the playlist. Under video, you want to click add to icon. 
you want, there's going to be several choices for you to come up that will come up. First one is going to be watch later. So you may want to view this video for yourself later. Faves, that is an old playlist from uh, YouTube. I don't think that's an option anymore. I should really remove it. Um, a playlist that you've already created. For instance, I've already created the ESL basics playlist, so I could add that video to that playlist. Or the last one would be create a new playlist and you click that and you can type in the, the name of the playlist. If you create a new playlist, you have to enter the playlist name. And of course, you can change that playlist name later on. You can use the drop down box to select your playlist privacy setting. If it's private, only you can view the playlist. And um, let's see, unlisted playlist. Hopefully, we can, we'll have enough time that I can demonstrate that. Let me make a note to myself. Okay, and um, let me see, and then you click create. So Jennifer, here I when am. you create a playlist, uh, mm -hmm. this question has come up a couple times, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. When you create a playlist, yeah. the videos added to that playlist, if they aren't yours, but you added them to your playlist, do they become your videos? It's as if you're creating an alias, a visual alias from that website. From, so I'm going to be showing that right now. Okay. So here's one uh, from uh, Learning Chocolate. And I'm going to be adding it to my playlist, ESL Basics. The video stays on the Learning Chocolate YouTube channel. But it's going to, an alias of it is going to appear on my channel when my students click on that that video i'm not getting the financial credit for it i'm not getting the views learning chocolate is getting the views so i'm not i'm not uh, violating copyright at all i'm simply creating uh, something like a visual alias to that that youtube uh, uh, video is that is that okay is that appropriate? I think it's a perfect description, but I'm a techie. Yeah. So, uh, okay. What's an alias? An alias is basically saying uh, if I give you the URL, these names and numbers and addresses are not going to mean anything to you. But if I give you a picture and say click here so you can watch something about numbers, you're like, okay, that's what I want to do. I'm not interested in those numbers and addresses and everything like that. I just want to learn more English. Okay, so here you're basically creating a picture and a link behind the picture that's going to take you to the right video to, to watch. Is that, is that a little bit better? I think that got it. Yes. Okay. Do you, do you, can you think of a better way to explain that? Yeah. I think people are worried about copyright. So if, yeah. you're, if you're creating a book list, and um, one of the books that you list is um, A Christmas Carol, my favorite book. I did not write that. I have it in my playlist, but Charles Dickens gets the credit for it. And if he was still alive, he'd be getting the money for it if it was a YouTube video. So you can add your own videos to your playlist, and then you would put your title, Jennifer's Awesome uh video about citizenship let's say that was the title yeah. then and she created it and she adds it to the same playlist then she's getting credit for it okay so here's here's one because i i really i know some people have problems with learning chocolate i really like it and they do have some videos so here is a video that i want to add to my esl basics playlist so I'm going to, I'm basically right clicking it and I'm, I'm going to add it. And now it's going to, it's, sorry, I think I got rid of that, that screen. Now it's going to be the, it's going to show up or it's going to appear on my, um, on my channel. Okay. So I don't have to tell my students go to learning chocolate. Learning ch chocolate is going to appear on my channel's homepage. 
that they simply can click that and go there immediately directly. I'm going to go on and I'm going to say, well, that was a video, but I want to get the whole playlist. Okay. So here's one from Jennifer ESL that I really love. And it's her new, she had a series one to 65, um, or 65 videos about basic English. So it's no scripts, nothing. They're simply, people are simply talking. Um, she's done another series and I like this series even better. If I simply click the, the, the little like almost hamburger with the plus sign, it would go into my library. But the thing is that the library is gonna appear on my playlist, uh, uh, page on my on my uh, my channel my channel home uh, home my channel I want it to appear on the front page so I don't want my students to go digging through all these different these different pages to find something I want them to it to be up here on the front page so they can immediately access it and they can't say to me teacher I can't find it because you know they'll say that so instead of clicking this this uh, add one, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to I'm going to share this playlist. Why do I want to share this playlist? I want this playlist to appear on my channel's homepage or the front page. Jennifer, we lose you when you turn away from the computer. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Do you want me to repeat that? I would be happy to. Yes. Okay. So. One of the things, so here is, um, let me see. Uh, let me start from the, uh, from the far left to go to the right. Okay, so on the far left, we have the home icon, which would bring us to the YouTube homepage. We would have trending, which would show the most popular videos. We have subscriptions that we would show all the subscriptions that I have subscribe to via my my youtube uh, channel and we have library and library is going to show all the videos that i have saved and all the playlists that i have saved however even if i go and save that stuff and it's in my library it's not going to be publicly on the front page of my channel and it's going to appear several tabs in on my channel I don't want my students to go hunting for the videos that I want them to watch. I want that stuff to appear on the home page or the front page of my channel. So instead of simply saving this, saving the, the video or saving the channel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna share, share this entire playlist. So I don't have to download anything. I simply am gonna grab that URL. URL because I want the playlist to appear on the channel home page. So all these, uh, I think there's a maybe uh, about 30 more videos uh, from Jennifer ESL. They're going to appear in a uh, in a playlist on my my home page. How do I do that? I am going to basically so excuse me. I basically click click the share button. And now this is going to appear. It's going to say, do I want to embed the, the playlist? No, I don't want to do that. Do I want to share it to Facebook? I do not want to do that. Twitter or Blogger or Tumblr? No, I don't want to do this. What I want to do is copy the link. So copy the link is basically saying that this is the page where all these videos from Jennifer ESL live. I copy it and now what I'm doing is I'm going back to my channel and I'm going to click customize the channel. So when I click, click customize the channel, what I'm going to do is scroll to the bottom. Sorry, let me, let me go back. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of my page. So here's my, my welcome page. I have some more ch uh, videos here. I'm going to basically scroll to the bottom of that page and it's going to, there's going to appear add a section. I want to add a new playlist. 
And what kind of playlist do I want to add? I want to select the content and define what the type of playlist is it going to be. It's going to be a single playlist and I'm going to select content. I want it to appear in a horizontal roll. If it's a vertical roll, it might scroll to the bottom of the page. I want it to appear in a horizontal row. Next, number three, I'm going to enter the playlist URL. So this is where I can put in that, that URL that I just copied from Jennifer ESL, and I'm going to click Add and then Done. Is everybody okay so far on that? Looks so like again, it. It's, we're going to add the section. I'm going to talk about the content. I'm going to add the URL. I'm going to click done. And now Jennifer, Jennifer ESL playlist now appears on the front page of my, uh, my uh, channel homepage. However, it's at the very, very bottom of the page and my students will get lost if you're, if you're uh, on that page. So what I'm going to do is up here, you see the little pencil mark, that means edit, and you have the little arrow. I can move this from the bottom of this page to almost the top. So the first video they're gonna see, this is a welcome to my, my, my uh, web page. You're gonna see the first 65 videos from Jennifer ESL, but then you get to see the second series. So the students, after they go through these videos, they're going to be pretty good with conversation. So here again, I've moved this the Jennifer ESL chat the the playlist from the very very bottom of my channel homepage, and now it's at the appropriate play, play, place so my students can now find it. Jennifer, could you go over um, the horizontal sure. row again? Thank you. Yeah, let me go back. So here. Um, and you might be able to see it in another place a little bit better. You know what? I'm not going to, if I go too far back, it's not going to be good. So here, there's the content that's the single play playlist, or I can say it's multiple playlists. I'm basically saying that I want it to appear by itself. I don't want to appear with learning chocolate stuff. I don't want it to appear with, oh, um, excuse me. Here's a good example up here of multiple playlists. I don't want it to appear in this series. I want it to appear by itself. Does that make sense? We got it. So this is a playlist. And could you go over the pencil one more time, uh, moving it up? Okay. So this is the, the uh, single playlist. It's horizontal, it's not vertical. Now up here we have the edit, and when I talk about uh, when this, the arrow is the thing that's going to move it. It's going to move it step by step up the page. If I want to edit this, this means I could basically add some information, or I could even change this playlist. I don't want to do this. I want it to move up it up by the arrow. Okay, is that a little bit better? I think so. And remember to face the computer. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, yes. Um, so again, I want to, so I, I made a mistake. I should not be highlighting both of these icons. These are two separate icons. This one, the arrow, is the, the thing that is going to reposition it on the channel homepage. The pencil is going to be that I can change it maybe from vertical to horizontal, or maybe I could even add, change it to another playlist, okay? Okay, so what is the alternative sending, or the, the alternative setting command for single playlist? Meaning if we do want mm -hmm. it to be in a combined row with other playlists, what do we select? Multiple playlists. Thank you. Okay. Um, here is an example of if I'm getting ready to embed a pay playlist. So this means you're not putting it on your YouTube channel. You might be bringing it into your, um, 
to Canvas, you might be bringing it into Google, you might be bringing it into Blogger. So what you're doing instead, you're clicking share again and you're copying and pasting the, uh, the uh, embed code. So this is the embed code here. One of the things with videos, individual videos, you can start at a particular time. So if you want students to focus on a particular, um, a particular part of the video, you can basically start it at a time. And so here it is on the YouTube, on Jennifer ESL's uh, YouTube channel. I've gotten the embed code and now I put it into my, um, to my blogger and now it appears on, as a blog post. So people, so I, I want to talk a little bit about Canvas and Google Classroom and um, um, forms. A lot of times you don't need the embed code. You simply need the URL of the video itself. And Google Classroom and uh, Google Forms automatically knows how to to basically create that embed code. And I think Canvas does as, as well. With Blogger or with uh, some other products that I've used, you actually have to grab that embed code. So this is, you basically have done the video here. And here you've been bas basically can do, instead of just one video, you can do the entire, uh, the entire playlist. And how do you know you've embedded the entire playlist? You basically see that little, the hamburger with the arrow that basically shows that, you've embedded the playlist. So um, I'm ready to go on to talk about other channel resources. Is there anything else that I can talk about right now or any questions? I don't think so. Everyone's watching with bated breath. How's that? <laughs> so you, when you get your students, you tell them, go to YouTube and watch my videos. They're like, well, I really like Wally. -E. I really like that video. I think I want to watch the Wally -E video. It's like, no, don't watch the Wally -E video. It's like, but I really like comedy. So do I want to watch Channel Ali? No, don't watch the channel. Do I want them to watch baseball? I always want people to watch baseball. I think baseball is a great sport, but please do not watch baseball. I want you to write, watch the Mark Kulik Making Friends video, okay? That's what I want you to do. That's your target. So instead of getting my students to wander all over the place on YouTube, basically I've created the channel to basically have them focus in on the can content they need to be looking at. So I want to talk about some of the resources, and I have about 10 resources to share. And I'm going to be talking about the different types. The first one is Procreated Content, and we have a really good one from StoryCore. StoryCore has gone over and uh, all over the country and done uh, interviews with, with people. And then they've taken these interviews, interviews archived them, and then uh, they've taken some of these interviews and then created um, visual uh, stories that go along with them. So I can't recommend this enough. I use these videos with my upper level students basically to inspire them to talk to their own, uh, to talk to their own elders and what kind of questions they need to ask to elicit some really interesting answers. So again, Created content and then StoryCorps also has great supplemental material about uh, on their website about how to interview people. So again, uh, please take a look at StoryCorps. Now, student created content. We have support adult ed, and this is a, a series of videos created by the students at Pima uh, Community College down in Arizona. And these students have basically interviewed themselves, told their own stories, and basically created, uh, used their own pictures and very rudimentary um, um, editing techniques to create their own stories. So this is really, really inspirational for students, again, to watch these very short videos and how they uh, have, um, how they are able to present their own stories. And a lot of them are talking about moving out, transitioning from adult ed into community college or into better jobs. 
um, and also to citizenship. So this is a really, really good series. I can't recommend it enough. And also the teachers have created a series of um, uh, uh, lesson plans to how they created that. Um, was there a question? Um, they're asking for the links to all the resources and I'm assuming it's your handout. So folks, we're gonna do that at the end of the presentation. It will all be on the OTAN website. Um, if you take a look at, if you go to support adult ed, uh, just, I'm going to just say this real quickly. If you go to the support adult ed, um, uh, channel and you go to the digital stories link, I think the information is there. Okay. If you want to simply shortcut this, this is a really valuable one. Um, and then also, excuse me. I think COAB did a, um, a special feature with these people uh, with the, the school uh, last year for, for the COAB um, National Conference. Adult basic skills learner, uh, for my money, GC Lear gclearnfree.org is really great for adult basic skills. Of course, they have their supplementary or they have their, their, um, their website, which is, adding more languages so they're adding more spanish content more portuguese content more arabic content but they have they have some really great playlists uh, spe specifically about career work skills sc soft skills searching for a job all sorts of things so again adult basic skills learner they really need to check out gclearnfree.org um, and also um, on their website they have uh, self-paced uh, courses that they can study these things online, these topics online. For workforce skills, I want to recommend two, um, two uh, really great sites. The first one um, is Career One Stop, and Career One Stop has hundreds of videos uh, related that they use on their own on their own uh, website. They've been organized into playlists. So students are like, well, I'm really interested in health services, but I don't know which which one would be the right video for me. These videos are about a minute long, and they basically talk about the education, the background, the expectation, and in some instances, the pay scale of each one of these uh, different. Um, different um, career choices. So this is really gonna be appropriate for EL civics uh, uh, or for adult basic skills when they're trying to look at workforce skills. Also, um, Khan Academy did a really, uh, did a whole separate channel about career and personal finance. And so those have been really, really good. So taking a look at those videos and seeing what the expectations are about um, about careers and personal finance are going to be really super important, especially right now. Some people are really contemplating what's going to happen with the economy and what kind of uh, careers are going to be emerging at, uh, post COVID-19. Dual learning. So for my money, American English. So this is the parent company or the parent um, organization of VOA and VOA Learning English. Not only do they have videos for students, they have videos also for teachers. So for instance, here's a video for a student. What types of new technology do you like to use? So there, that's gonna elicit some discussion from the students. Um, there's gonna be a video about uh, American English resources. So this is not only for the student, but also for the teacher as well. So sometimes they need to bring more technology into their class. There's gonna be information about how to use gerunds and infinitives. And I know that that was something that we would teach in ESL uh, three, and uh, sometimes it's even introduced in ESL two about what's the difference between a gerund and an infinitive. And then they have live streams where they're basically teaching teachers how to teach vocabulary. They also did a very interesting series on journalism. And this really pairs up really well with VOA Learning English 
that they did a series on um, on uh, news literacy. So talking about students developing a student newspaper or contributing to their local papers or even creating online or contributing to online news um, uh, sources is going to be really, really important uh, to get authentic information and to develop students' voices and leadership. For my lower level learners, I really like Mark Kulik. And initially, I thought this is really a dumb channel because it's slow, it's repetitive, there's music, it's cartoons. And exactly the reasons why I didn't like the videos were exactly the reasons why my students liked the videos, because they were the only videos that my students would actually whisper along or talk along with. So they would go slow enough that my students could actually repeat after Mark. He's not only doing these short videos, but he's also doing live streams and also videos about how to teach this kind of content. So there's a lots of variety on his website about uh, for low level students and for teacher how to teach vocabulary. And also for some intermediate students maybe to basically watch his live streams and so they can level up on their own, um, their own uh, speaking abilities as well. So, Simple graphics, repetition, the patterns, but it's very, very successful. And I've really seen improvements with my students learning, Mark, learning with Mark Killick. For intermediate English language learners, I really like 7ESL. And um, they had an, I'm sorry, I'm going to forget the, the, I think it's idioms.com or uh, something to that effect, but they have basically charts where these are again very slow moving but the students can follow along and basically learn English vocabulary or learn grammar points. Um, they have uh, or they work on pronunciation or they do things about business acronyms. Uh, uh, 7ESL is a really great uh, YouTube website, YouTube channel. Two from, oh, hi, Patty. Um, uh, two from uh, VOA. So there's VOA News and VOA Learning English. So VOA News um, has currently has a really good series on, or several good playlists on COVID-19. So those have been really good for my lower level students that there's not a lot of words to distract them, but they're able to generate a lot of content from simply describing what they're seeing on the video. So that's been very effective for my own, uh, for my own low level students. Um, VOA Learning English is all, or, sorry, VOA Learning English has um, grammar TV, they have playlists related to the American presidents. So really great for your lower level language learners. For your upper learner, uh, upper level learners, take a look at VOA News which is up to the minute information from all over the world, over the world about what's happening, especially nowadays with COVID-19 and some of the administration's um, pronouncements about that. For high school subjects, we have Crash Course and Khan Academy. So uh, Crash Course is super fast, but you can basically, um, uh, slow those videos down and watch them at a slower speed. Um, so they've been divided up into high school subjects and um, they're instantly accessible and you can, the students can learn along with both um, Crash Course and Khan Academy. And oh, I'm sorry, Khan Academy also has another channel in Sp uh, Spanish as well. And I was interested to see or get a reaction from people who have possibly learned the Spanish, learned with the Spanish channel from the Khan Academy. Has anybody done that? No? Nobody's answering, so I think Nobody's no. Nobody's answering, okay. <laughs> Other that, otherwise, I put them asleep. Resource that I'm gonna chat, I'm gonna share is that we have these deep dives with lesson plans from Ted in. So you got some really great graphics, especially uh, they have some recent ones about 
uh, more science-based about uh, pandemics and disease. Um, but these have been really high interest to share with our um, uh, uh, adult basic skills and our high school subject classes. However, those are interesting, but it's like, they're not accessible to some of our students because the language is too high. So what are you gonna do? So now I'm gonna move on to talking about how to use the YouTube videos. Is there any questions before I continue? Nothing that's open, Jennifer, okay. we're good. Okay, so um, one of the ones that I wanted to share, um, BPO, BPSOS is basically doing live streams of, 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 of classes. And so you have the instructor reviewing citizenship information and then they're, uh, they're live streaming that to Facebook and they're basically posting those videos to uh, their uh, YouTube channel. So this channel is maybe about two or three weeks old. Um, you, they have a combination of citizenship um, and ESL classes. The, student, the teachers are using a combination of books and uh, slides and all sorts of things. So take a look and uh, see, this is a way for their students to basically access this information outside the classroom. But I want people to see this and perhaps learn from these videos about how to conduct their own classes online. I want to talk about uh, five different uh, ways to use this. One of the, my very, very favorite uh, resources is We Speak NYC. Um, these are a series, uh, they did a, a series in 2008 and I, I, or 2009 and again in 2019 of different built, uh, videos or telenovelas and they had all sorts of supplemental PDFs uh, in multiple languages and then um, activities, PDFs that you can download and share with your students. They are not directly posting to, to, or they don't seem to be directly posting to YouTube. However, Literacy Partners is posting their videos to their website or to their YouTube channel. And they also have some very interesting videos over here. So for instance, the discovery, the joy of reading. So sometimes as a literacy teacher, you think, oh man, I know how to teach reading. I, I've done it all. Some of these videos are really inspirational and basically remind you, oh yeah, I haven't used that technique in a long time. I really need to, to, to get with that technique. So going and taking a look about how people teach literacy, how people use these videos as activities is really, really important. So again, um, these teacher, these videos from We Speak NYC, they're not explicitly teaching e English and they're not explicitly teaching um, uh, civics. However, they're talking, they're addressing concerns about domestic violence or balancing work and school or uh, workmen's comp or um, uh, health issues. So please, please, please take a look at these uh, videos and uh, take a look at their, their episodes and their um, supporting um, PDFs. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I forgot to make the point. The point I wanted to do is basically in this situation, you have the student watch the video and you, they, you've shared with them the PDF that goes along with the video and that's a way to teach. Now, a lot of our students are not gonna have access to the printers. Um, so that might be a little bit difficult, but you can still email people the PDFs uh, for them to, to basically do uh, reflect on. Another really interesting YouTube website is youglish.com. And this is basically accessing, it's a tool that basically access the YouTube. And so from here, you're saying, well, I wanna search on a term, how to pronounce binge watch. So they'll come up with maybe about 89 different videos about how to pronounce binge watch. But it's not so much about pronouncing, it's more like taking a look at the pragmatics or the semantics or the syntax or, idioms or collocations or pronunciation, how people use 
living English. So for instance, you're not just simply look at the pronunciation, you're looking at all different ways that binge watch is being used. So you could type in the word citizenship or you can type in any term that you want and you, it will, Youglish will go in, access YouTube videos, pull out those videos and they'll start showing you the video maybe about one to three seconds before the actual uh, term is used. So students can basically see English being, um, being used in, in real life. Now, uh, you can choose to say, hey, I see people from the United States or the UK or Australia, but I think sometimes it's really interesting to see all sorts of different usages and accents. So here's where you can make the choices up here about where do you want to pull the videos. Uh, would you, is there a question? No. Um, and do we have the time? You have about 10 minutes. Okay. All right, great. One of the most important things, again, um, some of the, the um, resources that I shared, they're pretty sophisticated. Um, one of the things they're like, God, there's no PDF with this. How can I make a really good presentation from it? You can create transcripts. So let me talk about the easy way to create transcripts. So here's another video from Jennifer ESL. It's about how to write a job inquiry email. I'm like, oh, this is such a good video. Plus her husband is um, basically works for a job recruiter. So she's getting some really good tips and showing some really good uh, email usage. What you, oh, sorry, excuse me. Let me go back. What you do, you go for the dot, dot, dot on the bottom. And that's gonna be basically opening up more information that you can use. So. You don't want to report the video because there's no bad content in there. What you want to do is open the transcript. It's going to open the transcript automatically. And if you, you basically click the dot, dot, dot over here, you can basically toggle these um, timestamps. And what is a timestamp? This is when, when, or where the, um, the, uh, the, uh, text appears. Now, you can also see if she has different uh, type of uh, closed captions. The default is English auto-generated closed captions, which is no problem because Jennifer ESL speaks really clearly. However, there, with some of my videos, I have English auto-generated and I have basically standard English. So you can basically uh, click them back and forth. What you can do if you take off, if you basically toggle away the timestamps, you can basically simply copy and paste the con these, this transcript. You can dump it into uh, a Word file or uh, Google, uh, any text file that you want. And you can basically recreate and basically take sections in or manipulate the text whatever the way you want. You could create closed listening trans, uh, exercises. You can create a grammar lesson or a writing lesson where basically the student has to correct and put in where, um, where the punctuation would be. You can do all sorts of stuff with creating uh, by creating a transcript simply from the content that's already there. So let me repeat this again. Go to the dot, dot, dot at the bottom, open the transcript, basically use the, the, the vertical dots to, create, to, open the, um, to open the timestamps and basically get rid of those, uh, the timestamps, make sure it's, uh, you have the correct uh, language and you can copy and paste that into another uh, file and then manip manipulate it into creating a closed exercise. How I usually use uh, videos is I simply basically embed them into my own blog post and basically I create, uh, create quizzes on it. So for instance, this is uh, African uh, immigrant. She's talking about school and joining the Air Force and I have some citizenship questions in here. 
and also there was some further information. However, you can also, a better way to do this is basically to have, uh, to use Edpuzzle, which will basically show the video and then basically stop the video and up will pop up uh, a question. So for instance, here's a minute uh, video about George Washington. And while the video is playing, it's gonna pop up who was the first president and the student can basically answer the question and then continue along. However, as you can see, this is a minute video and I think I have 10 questions on that, it's really stupid. Don't do that. Um, make sure, you know, try to space out the questions a little bit better than I can. And again, you can embed this into your Canvas uh, classroom or your Google classroom because, um, or whatever blog post that you have, because Edpuzzle is basically an add-on to the, the Google suite. And, um, Edpuzzle has a really good professional development. So there's different ways that you can, they have different ways to show you how to use uh, Edpuzzle, especially in the flip setting, which, which is really amazing. So these are miniature courses that you can learn more about how to use Edpuzzle. Some people love Edpuzzle, other people like, uh, prefer Pear Deck and Nearpod and uh, because they can incorporate videos and your slide decks and all sorts of things and they can deliver the content to your students in whatever your preferred setting is. But for my money, I think Google Forms really does it. With Google Forms, you can basically embed, embed videos and after the students watch the videos, you can basically, they can take uh, uh, different uh, quizzes and um, the, the, the the teacher will get the information about how successful the student was in the quiz. Um, I really, because we were very focused in on the, the census, I used a lot of these uh, short census videos to answer questions, um, and they were really, really successful on that. Um, I want to uh, uh, share two more slides. One was teach thought because a lot of times we just don't want the students to be passive. We want them to basically engage in critical thinking. So these are two really good um, uh, 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 articles about, t uh, about how to uh, teach uh, with uh, uh, best teaching practices with videos and how to read a video like you're reading a book. So how do you annotate it? How do you... Uh, whole information out of that video. So please take a look at these are bit.ly um, uh, bit.ly for BPS dash video uh, dash video. So the BPS is best practices strategies. So again, it's bit.ly slash for BPS dash videos. And this one is bit.ly slash YT for YouTube dash COMP for computer, or sorry, for comprehension slash strategy. Was there a question about that? No? Okay. No question, but just um, a note to all yeah. of our attendees that when we post links now, Zoom does not allow them to be live links. So when we post them in the chat, you have to copy and then paste them somewhere or you could paste them in a browser and then open them. Okay. Finally, that's it from, from OTIN. Does anybody have any burning questions that I can share? Because there was so much more that I really want to, wanted to share. Jennifer, we were ask, answering questions as we went along. I think we got them all. Okay. Um, if they're, if I'm wrong, please, everybody, type questions in the Q and A. We're getting some thank yous. Can we make open captions default? What? Um, I don't know that. Let me take a look at my. Let me let me go back to share. I'm going to do a new share and I am going to go to one second.
Uh, okay. Screen. Come on. Are you seeing my desktop? Yes, there's your okay, Gmail. So, uh, so are you seeing YouTube? Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quick, try to go quickly to my own uh, YouTube channel. So I need to switch accounts. And I just for your information, folks, you won't have to do this to get to Jennifer's channel. No. <laughs> I think I'm having some problem. I think we're we're I'm I'm experiencing some some the really internet is slow. So if if people did a search for U.S. Citizen Pod, yeah, would that bring up your channel for them? That would bring up the channel for them. But the thing is, is I'm going to have to get into my creator account. Let's see if I have anything here that I can. Okay. Let's see. And Jennifer, for while you're doing that, um, videos in different LMSs like Moodle, Canvas, Schoology, do you use embed codes or do you use links? I think for most part, from what I remember about Canvas, I haven't used Canvas in a long time, but usually they're using um, the URL. Hi, this is Teacher Jennifer Oops, from US so, so, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to me right now. <laughs> okay, so, um, so what I'm doing is right now I'm going to my YouTube studio, and the YouTube studio is where people can automatically, um, they can. That's where you edit your videos. And so what I want to do is show you how to quickly that I want to basically um jennifer can i interrupt yeah, please because i know what this is going to take and i also know that the internet's slowing down and i see everybody asking for a part two so okay. i'm going to put you on the spot okay and i'm going to ask you can you do a youtube video or can you do another presentation on how to create a video how to post it to youtube and do some of the voodoo that you were just about to do would that absolutely. be possible that absolutely there you go, folks. You heard it here, and I have it being recorded, so we're going to hold her to that. <laughs> She's going to do another one. We'll get it. Um, we have to fuss and discuss dates, so she'll be able to show you how to create a video. Um, Jennifer, do you use Screencastify or? No, a lot of time, like um, a lot of time, I could use Screencastify. A lot of times, I'm actually doing stuff in uh, PowerPoint. Uh, I've done things, I've recorded things on my iPhone and I've done it that way. So, I mean, it, it really simply depends. Um, do they want Screencastify? No, I'm just, I'm just asking the medium that you play. So we have a, uh, a presentation that was done on how to create a video using PowerPoint. It was done by Yesenia uh, Delgado Lorenzo. And that will be posted on the OTAN uh, page very soon. Uh, Jennifer does not use OBS. I just saw this question. Um, I know that for a fact, but I'm going to turn her on to it because she might like it. Um, and it's looking like most of the other questions left were, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? So we're going we're gonna to get that done uh, on her next video. Okay. Okay.